What's up guys, it's Kundalini. Today we are going to be going through Ronnie's questline, which is tied to one of the game's multiple endings, along with some pretty awesome unique rewards. So, let's get into it. To be able to access Ronnie's quest, you will first need to get through Caria Manor and defeat Royal Knight Loretta in the northwest corner of Liarnia, where you can then follow the path to Ronnie's Rise to start the quest. Upon reaching Ronnie's Rise, head to the top to talk to Ronnie and enter her service. She will tell you to go and talk to the others in her service. Head back down and talk to E.G., Blyde, and Celibus, then head back and talk to Ronnie. You will be trapped in here until you exhaust everyone's dialogue. The next step in the quest will be obtaining the Finger Slayer Blade. The next three steps are lore intensive steps. The first step is speaking with Blyde and Seofra River about what Celevis knows about Nakron and Radon. Next, you will need to travel to Celevis where he will give you an introduction letter to Selen to learn more. Finally, you will find Selen in Limgrave and give her the introduction and she will tell you that you need to defeat Radon to enter Nakron. If you haven't unlocked the Radon fight yet, you will need to have the left and right medallion of Dectus from Fort Height and Fort Foroth and use it at the Grand Lift of Dectus after getting two great runes. After defeating Radon, you will be able to talk to Blyde. He will instruct you to go to where the star fell as seen by the red dot on your map. Travel to Fort Height and follow the path I take to the entrance of Nakron. Once you reach the Nakron Eternal City side of Grace, you will need to follow the path that I have marked on the map. Along this path, you will fight the Mimic to your boss. It is best to fight this boss naked. Our next step is the Ancestral Woods side of Grace. After reaching the Ancestral Woods side of Grace, you can enter the Night Sacred Ground to find the Finger Slayer Blade. If you follow the path I take, you will be able to find the Mimic Tear Ashes and Smithing Stone 3 and 4 along the way. As you enter this building, you will be able to find the Mimic Tear Ashes in the east corner. At the top of these stairs, you will find the Finger Slayer Blade in a chest. You are going to return to Rani and her rise and give it to her. In return, she will give you the Carrion Inverted Statue. You are going to take the statue to the Carrion Study Hall entrance in Liarnia. Here you can place the statue on a pedestal where it will change the building layout. Follow the path I take to safely reach the bottom. Once you reach the bottom of the elevator, you are going to want to find the exit via the large doors at the gate opening. This will lead you to the Liarnia Tower Bridge. On this bridge, you will sadly have to fight the Godskin Noble. So, good luck! After defeating him, continue to make your way to the Divine Tower.
At the top of the Divine Tower, you will collect the Curse Mark of Death. After collecting the item, head to Rena's Rise, which is north of Ronnie's Rise. I know, it's kind of confusing, but just roll with it. At Rena's Rise, you can collect her Snow Witch gear and take the Way Portal to the Ansel River Main, which is our next location. Once you come out on the other side of the Way Portal, walk forward to that coffin and pick up the miniature Ronnie doll. Take this doll to the side of Grace off to the side of the screen. Here, sit down and talk to the doll three times. After the third time, the doll will talk to you and Ronnie will tell you to kill the Baleful Shadow in the Lake of Rot. The reason Ronnie asks you to eliminate the Baleful Shadow is that they drop an important item that will help you finally finish this long, long quest. Once you exit that dark and scary cave full of enemies, the Baleful Shadow will invade your world. Now be careful, because he is skilled in the art of kicking your ass and having no remorse. I would know, because he did that to me because I decided to underestimate him. Now once you do kill the Baleful Shadow, he's going to drop the discarded palace key. And you can use this key at the chest in the Raya Lucario Grand Library. But we're not going to go there yet, we have some other business we need to take care of here. So if you haven't seen my other video on how to beat Astel, go give that a look because that's where we're going next. Once you finish sloshing around and playing in the Lake of Rot, you'll finally make it to Astel's Neck of the Woods. Once you go through the mist, you can fight him. But to be honest, he's kind of an easy boss if you just dodge this railgun and you get behind his head and hit him. Once you do defeat him, it's another boss off your checklist and we can continue on. Next, we're going to go to the Raya Lucaria Grand Library and use that discarded palace key. When you finally get back to the Grand Library, Take a left, and you see that chest? That's the chest we're looking for. Go ahead and open it up, and you're going to get the Dark Moon Ring. Now this is the last major item of this quest, and we're going to take it back to where we fought Astel. Now that you have returned to Astel's boss room, we are finally at the precipice of the quest line. Follow through the big cave opening, and eventually you will reach the Moonlight Altar.
As you exit the small wooded area, don't forget to get the side of grace right off to your left. We're going to head to those beams of light around the building up there. Now, when you get up there, don't be alarmed, but there's going to be a dragon. Just run past him. He can't get into the building with you and he can't hurt you. Now, the cathedral that we're coming up to is the Cathedral of Manus Celis. Remember, just run past him. He can't hurt you. I promise. Now once you're inside, head all the way to the back of the cathedral and get the Sight of Grace. We're going to go through the hole in the ground off to your right. Music bed. Here's the hole we're going to be jumping down. Now be careful jumping down because if you don't land on this ledge, you could either die or severely hurt yourself. And we wouldn't want that, would we? At the bottom of the cave, you're going to find a dead Ronnie and go up to her and interact with her. I'm not going to spoil what comes next because I want to leave that up to you for you to discover. After interacting with Ronnie, you will be able to get the Dark Moon Greatsword, which is a wonderful sword. It applies frost buildup and has the skill of the Moonlight Greatsword. Now at the end of this quest, there is a bonus and I might say very sad bonus. You head back to Ronnie's Rise, and if you head outside, you will find Blyde at the front of her rise. Here, he is very sad and overcome with emotions. You will fight him, and it is a very heartbreaking fight. After you defeat him, he's going to drop the Royal Greatsword and his armor. If you want a little bit extra from this quest, there is an epilogue where you can go talk to E.G., and it is just him being sad and remorseful for Blyde. Hey guys, it's Kundalini. If you made it this far into the video, you're awesome and I love you. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and don't forget to turn on the notifications. If you have any suggestions about what quest or boss or item you want to be found next, leave a comment down below and I'll be sure to get on that as soon as possible. So thank you again anyways and I'll see you guys next time.